And it is nine o'clock. And so we welcome you to this Your Women's Fund Miami Dade. We are full of leaders on screen and definitely here with us today, virtually gathered. So leaders, please introduce yourselves, take charge like I know the alphas that you are and, um, and share resources, share your names and your good mornings here in the chat. So my name is Maria, Maria Meyer, so lucky and blessed. Let's say it, it's the last impact collaborative of the year. I am so lucky to be the executive director of your Women's Fund Miami Dade and to work with this incredible team that makes me want to get up excited in the morning. So everybody who's on here, Kami, who organizes these, Viviana, who you're going to see in a second, Natasha, working behind the scenes here, Vero, Nikki, and all our amazing, powerful alpha interns. Oh, the future is bright. The future is bright when you talk about the interns of your Women's Fund Miami Dade. So, so it's the end of the year. So, so very special thanks to you all. And then on we go to always thank our tremendous board of directors. Talk about strong, incredible women, all women, this cohort, amazing women. We thank you and we thank our founder, Marilyn Gladstone, who is our biggest cheerleader and biggest fan. Uh, we've got quite a bunch of amazing folks who've signed up today. Um, every one of you are amazing. And some of you also have incredible networks that you represent. So uh, we thank you for sharing the information with your incredibly powerful networks. Um, and we do have representatives from our county mayor, Daniela Levine Coven's office is in the house today. So we thank you each and all um, for the support of our incredible mayor's leadership. And on we go to tell you that the Women's Fund has um, four programs and four pillars. Today, we're talking about leadership. One of our programs is convening. So this Impact Collaborative is one of those uh, programs. We also have data and research. And I'm going to ask the wonderful Viviana Alvarado Pacheco to tell you a little bit more. What's this leadership score, Viv? Good morning, everybody. My name is Viviana. I'm the Senior Research and Policy Manager here at the Women's Fund of Miami-Dade. And what you're seeing on screen is actually part of our Gender Equity Index, which was released in, October, in September of this year. And for the leadership score, we are at 44 points, um, which means that we're 56 points away from reaching equity in leadership for um for uh, women and girls and everybody in our community. Um, the metrics that we use were representation and elected positions as well as voter turnout. And you can see all of this information um, by clicking in the next slide. You can see the QR code um, to, see, to get more information. We just released some really good um, um, one pagers that have synthesized all the information that is part of our policy paper, and then you can access easily. Um, we believe that board uh, leadership is extremely important to women's leadership. However, the data on that is very limited, so we haven't included it here, but our hope is to be able to collect it in the future and have it be part of the gender equity index. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much, Super Viv. All right, so on we go. We've got really strong voices, as I said, also here in attendance today. We wanna hear from you all. There will be three polls throughout the webinar. Please, we do record your, your opinions and we use them, not kidding. Um, please post your questions for the panel using the Q&A icon. Some of you put it in the chat and I try and grab them. We'll get to as many as we can at the end. And as soon as we're done, you're gonna get a, a an, an exit survey. And of course that ha helps us too. It helps us to understand how well we do in these impact collaboratives. We're always iterating, like some of you heard me talk about before, we're always improving. Help us to improve, know what you like and care about. And it also helps us, frankly, to explain to funders, if we're applying, applying for a grant, it helps us to know um, what the polls say. So not kidding, please do the exit survey. <laughs> And on we go to give voice to the really strong voices of today. Um, Natalie Norfus is somebody who you may have, have heard speak before because she's a, she's a wonderful commanding presence and leader. And we thank you, Natalie, for framing um, today's session. Take it away. 
Good morning, and I really appreciate the kind introduction. Um, <clears throat> I'm Natalie Norfus, and I am the founder of the Norfus Firm, and I love to say we solve people problems. Uh, the work we do touches on workplaces all over the world, for-profit, non-profit, and I get the sort of great, great pleasure of being able to see the workplace uh, and talk about these sorts of issues around leaders from many different vantage points. Um, and it was inter it's interesting because this is an interesting time to be working, honestly. The workplace has changed dramatically post-pandemic, and I'm often getting interviewed by reporters about some of these workplace trends. And earlier this week, I was interviewed um, on a podcast, and the topic was um, uh, this this trend that's called the soft girl revolution. And I didn't give much thought to them naming the the trend because all of these trends, soft girl revolution, soft girl era, quiet quitting, all are sort of the you know a variation of the same theme that people are tired and they don't want to work the way they worked before not that they don't want to work at all but they don't want to give their whole lives to working and they don't want to be defined by only working um and interestingly it's not just women and so i say all this to say i talk about the topic a lot i didn't really think much about this was the topic that the host of this podcast wanted to talk about because i'm really familiar with it um, and I very quickly realized that the host had an angle and he kept saying, so women are referring, women are returning to their feminine. And I was really confused at first. I was like, I don't, I don't really know what that means. And so I said, well, I guess it depends on what you define by feminine, uh, because all of us have both feminine and masculine energy. Um, and as conversation progressed a bit, I realized what he was saying was that women are going back to being women in quotes and they were trying to be men by, they were in their masculine. He kept saying that they're in their masculine uh, because they wanted to climb corporate ladders. And now, you know, they're going back to, you know, wanting to be stay at home moms, which is a really odd binary way of talking about it, at least from the way my brain works. And so the way I was at least able to check it a bit was like, do you even want to work? You probably don't even want to work. And then he started laughing. And I'm like, because it applies to everyone. Everyone is tired. But what it did, the takeaway I had from that is, we're always being told who we are and what we're trying to do and who we're trying to be. And it's it's an interesting thing that happens with women a lot where we gotta get, people wanna box us into this. Again, we're, we're either at work, we're either at home being stay at home moms or, or trying to be too aggressive and work too hard to climb the corporate ladder. And there's all these like labels and boxes that we get put into. So when I think about that for myself and like where that, where I, grown is I get to define who I am, as does everyone else who's joined today. We get to define the path we want. We get to change it. We get to change our minds. We get to cut our hair, grow our hair. We get to be thin. We get to be bigger body. We get to be whatever we choose we want to be. Um, and I think it's an important for what we're talking about today and what you all are going to be exploring, uh, you know, with the panel on how, you, how we think about leadership from being a on a board and how we think about mentorship. I'm really excited um, about the topic because one of my mentors in the audience bigging me up and I love her very much, um, Marcy and Ryan Weldon. And, and I love you too, Arethi. Thank you for, for also bigging me up. But I think about Marcia as a mentor um, and, and the importance of me trying to figure out who I am at the various stages of my life. And an example I talk about a lot, and Marcia, you may not know this, but I, I talk about this like regularly, like almost every time someone asks me, why did I start my own business? Um, mentors help you realize the things you can do, right? And the things you want to be. And Marcia didn't, I don't know that she knew exactly, but she called me in March of 2019 um, because she had gotten a big project that she needed help with and wondered if I would help her. And it was her calling me to ask me that, that solidified, well, I guess I'm starting a business um, because I need to get an LLC if I'm going to uh, take money from Marcia. And I appreciated her believing in me to help her on this project. And so when we think about defining who we are, mentors can help you explore that. Because again, we get to define who we are, but your mentors can say, well, what about this? Or they can believing you when you don't really necessarily believe in yourself or know what you even are trying to believe in in that moment. Um, and 
so there's a piece of thinking about identifying mentors in, in that role of, I need help figuring out up my path. I'm thinking about this, <clears throat> but I'm not really sure. And then sometimes they can kick you in the butt, like calling you, like Marcia called me and saying, I, I need you to help me do all these things. And I'm like, I guess she believes in me to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it. Cause I think she's badass, right? Like if Marcia is telling me I can do this with her, then, okay, let me go do it. They can also be there for you to help, you know, uh, snatch you back. So I always say, I don't think I would be here without mentors. I, and that's exactly why I'm on the board I'm on, which I'll talk about in a second. Cause I've had mentors like snatch me back. Like, no, 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 don't do that. Don't say that. Let's, let's think about this uh, for a second. And I'm appreciative of it because there's moments I wanted to react to things I thought were going wrong and they helped me respond. Um, and there's such a big difference between those two things. So when we think about mentorship and we think about, we get to define who we are, think about finding folks that can help you in these moments that can help give you perspective you don't have. So I'm a big fan of having mentors that are nothing like you, right? Like that that you all share, or at least seemingly nothing like you, because you're getting these different perspectives from people. And when we think about big brothers, big sisters, that's a, a lot of what we try to do. We try to pair littles uh, with bigs who are not like them, that come from different communities, that come from different backgrounds. And it's it, and I've been on that board for over 10 years and I continue to be on the board because we get to hear about uh, littles who you know grew up in rough parts of uh, you know uh, Coconut Grove, uh, be paired with older white men partners at law firms, who helped them realize, hey, I really wanted to be a dentist. I didn't think that was a real thing, but now I'm in dental school, right? And so the idea is, uh, we don't have to have everyone. Everyone, we won't be great if everyone is like us in our circle. So. Not only do we have mentors to help us find our path, but we can also have mentors that help us see different perspectives, different than our own. And when we think about board membership, and we think about the fact, again, that we get to choose who we are, I always encourage people to choose boards that align with your own um, moral compass. Uh, for those of us who are partic participate on boards, you know that it's sometimes a labor of love and you're putting in a lot, a lot of work. Um, and so if you're choosing a, a, a mission that doesn't align with your moral compass, it's not going to, it's not going to click for you. Um, and it's going to feel like work and it's going to feel like, mm, and I'm not really sure why I'm doing this. Um, but when you're clear about what your own why is and what your own moral compass is, then it's going to attract you to two boards um, that will help you uh, make an impact and further your own personal moral compass. Um, and when on a board, um, I always encourage folks to get on the committees, but again, get on committees where you're going to be able to add the value of your mental prowess mm -hmm. and the things you do really well, um, because those leadership positions that you can take on the board um, help you practice. Um, and not just, not just like, I don't say practice, like you're not going to do great work, but help you practice for roles that you might have in your work life. Um, so on, on Big Brothers, Big Sisters, I've served in many different capacities. I laugh because I'm like, wow, if I went through that whole list of the things that I've, the, the committees I've served on, including being on the executive committee and being co-legal counsel, uh, doing HR support, um, it's wearing a lot of hats, but it's really fulfilling because we know why we're doing it. We're doing it because we want to see more kids in Miami-Dade County um, receive the power and the benefit of mentoring and the connection and the access that those sorts of relationships provide. Um, being able to call someone that that knows people who knows people is a big deal. And a lot of marginalized people don't have access in that way. So for me, I'm always going to do it because I know what it does when you're having an opportunity uh, to be in rooms that you wouldn't otherwise be in. So um, if as I as I leave you uh, all to enjoy the rest of your time together, I just encourage you to remember you get to define who you are. And when you're doing that, you are going to attract connections that help you uh, uh, continue down the path. And also remember, even when you decide who you are, you get to change your mind. Uh, we're not one thing. We're not in the box people put us in. Um, and anytime someone tries to put you in the box, please fight your way out of it or call me and I'll help you fight your way out of it. And I'd love to connect with as many of you as possible. So please feel free to reach out. 
um, via our socials, via email. I'm always happy to chat and have coffee uh, or go for a walk or whatever the things are that work for folks um, it, to connect. So be well and have a great, great rest of your session. We're going to ask you to join us at the Q&A. Hopefully there'll be a little bit of, of time at the end, Natalie. Um, sure. You made people laugh and cry today, I think, already. So <laughs> uh -huh. that's a lot for about eight minutes. Congratulations. So uh, we're, we're really thanking uh, especially our, our board members who are here with us today for their service. Um, the structure today is slightly different, as, as you will have noticed. We have asked leaders to, um, not only Natalie, but the, our, our panelists now, who are serving on boards and uh, have, have mentorship expertise, right? So it's a twofold. In the first portion, we're going to ask our first panelist to tell us a little bit about why mentorship is important and the specifics of her organization. So please take it away, Claire. Thank you so much for being here. Good morning, and thank you very much for including me in today's conversation. I'm coming to you from the perspective of um, leading the IT Women Board for the past 20 years, which is a local not-for-profit that is focused on advancing women in the technology industry. And the Women's Fund has actually played a pivotal role in supporting our programs over the past 20 years, being one of our first and early funders supporting our Role Models program, which has been mission critical to uh, helping young women in Miami-Dade County to see themselves in a career in technology. When kids start school in elementary school, Girls and boys feel equally you know, adept at math and science. However, the reality is by the time they hit middle school and high school, the numbers of girls who feel that the potential of technology for them is, is just out of their reach. They feel that math and science is just not for them. And there's a whole host of reasons why that's happening. But the role model program that we have been uh, partnering with Miami-Dade schools for over you know, 20 years on has seen us reach about 25,000 girls uh, with female role model speakers. So sending women into the classrooms and, and through virtual programs as well. So girls can see that they too can be involved in the technology industry has had an enormous impact on helping us create a pipeline of girls who then are interested in pursuing uh, degrees in technology and engineering, which then uh, we support through a scholarship program where we've awarded close to a million dollars to 138 girls here in Miami-Dade and Broward counties to support them through their college journey. But then even more importantly, uh, paired them with uh, mentors that are women uh, leaders in our local community in the technology field to help them make that transition to college. Um, most of the girls we work with have been uh, first generation college students um, from minority backgrounds. And we've thrown them into programs at Harvard, Georgia Tech, uh, every college you can imagine in engineering and computer science degrees. And they're one of a very few number of girls in these classes. So the mentors um, that we've partnered these young women with have been absolutely critical in helping them actually matriculate, um, helping them adjust to college life. And then, you know, as, um, as Natalie mentioned, uh, connecting them with folks who can help them secure these incredibly valuable internships and even, and even jobs. And the reason I'm here and continue to talk about this 20 years later is, is obviously today, you know, the rate of uh, change has been accelerated by technology and it's more critical than ever that we have a diverse uh, workforce creating these solutions that are impacting all of our lives. Um, so during my career, I've also benefited from, you know, mentors I have served on, on several boards and, and I can't stress enough, you know, the value of 
uh, being a board member and how that gives back to you. I'm going to ask you to do that in your second segment, Claire. Okay, no problem. Uh, <laughs> so much, guys. It's perfect. No, it's it's perfect. What we're asking everybody to do, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask you to go next, Barry, and introduce yourself in context. Why did we invite you here today? And in this segment, can you please tell us about the mentorship of the organization that you're representing today, Empowering Youth. Can we ask you to do that? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Barry Bergens. I'm the director of a uh, not-for-profit, as well as I sit on the board of, of Dr. Wanza's Empowering Youth programs. Um, I'm a former director of Human Resources Caterpillar Tractor Corporation. Um, I'm the first black um, manager in that program here in Miami Gardens. That's been I don't know, maybe 25, 30 years ago. But I've been working with Dr. Ronza uh, from the beginning of her programs and uh, through a mentor program with her. Um, there's some things that I wanted to kind of discuss with you guys um, as far as uh, what our roles are and our responsibilities um, for, for being uh, mentors in these programs. And... Uh, we uh, have to understand our responsibilities in sitting as board members. Um, we should understand the roles, our roles and responsibilities, including their legal duties um, of care, the loyalty and the obedience uh, to the mission of what the organization is trying to pull and get done. And we should also be aware of the organization's missions, goals, and objectives. Uh, secondly, I think we need to contribute to strategic planning. I think that's a big part of what we really need to do. Um, a lot of persons uh, feel boards with persons who just don't have any type of skill set to support the mission of the organization that they're with, and they don't have any training or teaching. Some people just get members of their families thinking that's okay, but there's no dis diversity in that. And the other part of it is that the creativity that comes along with that diversity is not there to help influence the direction of where the company needs to go. And most times it's just a um, pat on the back and say, you're doing a great job. Well, we have to evaluate the board. We have to make sure that everyone in the board has some form of strategic planning. I also sit on the board of Veterans Affairs for the city of Miami Gardens. Um, and we just had an event there and we had 10 months to do an event for the first um, time that they wanted to have this event. And everybody would think that's a long time, but the 10 months is not 10 months in actuality because the board only meets the second Tuesday of every other month. So we had five meetings and the board meetings last one hour. So that gave us five hours um, for those 10 months to put the programs together. And we had to really be strategic in our planning because as you can imagine, trying to put five hours of planning into a 10 month program, you have really got to be precise in what you're trying to do as far as accomplishing your mission. So we understood some things about accomplishing our mission. And the first thing is that we need to have a vision before we can even have a mission. And in having the vision for what we're doing, it allows us to see where we're going and what, what we can do. And the second part is now we have a mission that tells us how to get it done. And then the third part is that we have fundamental values of what the organization supports so that we can stay in all of those frameworks at the same time. Um, we have to be ab ab ambassadors and advocates for the organization. Um, here with Dr. Wanza, um, I don't always have to agree with her, but I also need to make sure that we're not at odds and at ends um, in some type of confusion. No matter what it is, we've got to um, tone it down to make it work for the organization. It's not my way or her way. It's what's best for the organization and for the people that we're serving within our communities. Um, and. We have to learn how to brand and engage what that is so that people can readily know and understand what it is that we're trying to prioritize. Um, so we're just trying to make sure that we can do the best we can. Um, we also need to create 
a positive board culture. Um, that you can understand as members of a board, you got different people from different um, structures in their past that are coming on board and you've got to try and get them to understand how we've got to be able to encourage the organization that we're in, make sure that we curtail craziness and make sure that we understand that we have some fundamental values that says that we wanna be tops in our community at what we're doing. We're pushing the, the envelope to make sure that there's nothing held back, but at the same time, we've got to fix it so that even though it's nothing held back, it still is appreciative and being able to say, that's not exactly the way to get it done. You've got to come together on those thoughts. So we wanna create a, a, a positive uh, board culture and we wanna to work together as a team to achieve the organizational goals. Um, we also regularly evaluate board performance. Uh, board members should regularly evaluate the performance of the board and individual board members. And that's very important. Because if someone is slack, it holds everybody else back. And there are some times that we look at things, and I'll just say this from a political standpoint, um, when we look at different um, groups that are pushing for um, the Senate and the House and those types of things, I'm, I'm, I'm amazed that we can get much done at all because of the inward fighting and the lack of prioritizing what, what we're there for. And that's for the people of this country to make sure that we're giving everybody a fair share. Um, I, I just want to make sure that we do whatever we can to evaluate our board performance. I, I noticed that that was something that I think you did at the very beginning of this. Um, you talked about the statistical data of the performance of the board. Well, a lot of persons don't do that. And they don't do that. And then they find out that they're in a deficit because they didn't evaluate what the members were supposed to be doing, how they were to accomplish it, and when should it have been accomplished. And so you've got to take the data because all of us have to report to somebody to get funding cycles. And without data, how do you have a funding cycle? I just don't know and I don't understand it. So we want to make sure that we, we uh, do that. Um, we want to provide financial oversight within the company and the organization. Um, sometimes that's a little bit difficult because some persons want to keep their finances private. But if I'm going to sit on your board or I'm going to try and participate on your board, there are some things that we can do also to help make that process a little bit easier. And that is simply say, let's regularly take a look and overview. We don't need to get all the details. I want to get an overview of the process and the procedures to see if you're meeting those. And if you want to give me the data that supports the, the actual amounts, that's even better. But let me know the planning and the procedures of how you're getting this thing done um, on the financial side. Uh, with not-for-profits, that's extremely important. We cannot sit back and, and let people just do what they want to do because it does not meet the measure of what we have to accomplish as an overall goal for the performance of the operations. Thank you um, so much, Barry. Okay, so I, I just really want to say this last little piece. Um, we have to be willing to change to improve. Um, we can't keep having and recycling the same board members. We have to constantly and fluently bring in other people. Um, part of the board process is this, and I do this with um, my own organization as well. Um, we have a, a mentoring program for the board. We have a mentoring process for the board. So part of that mentoring process is, uh, there was a program this year, because I work with um, kids um, that whose parents have been incarcerated. I work with vocational rehabilitation because I'm a provider of services through the Department of Education for persons with disabilities. And I work with incarcerated persons and those types of things. Um, I need to make sure that I'm not only bringing in the persons that I need for my organizations at this point, 
but I need to have a vision that's farther down the road than just where I'm at right now. And the way that I do that is with my board, um, we go to different events together. I make sure that they go to events that I go to so that they can see some of the other persons that are involved in the same scenarios in the same businesses platforms that I am. And that allows them to see how I do business. Um, we did a juvenile justice program here at St. Thomas University this year. And we looked at the pipeline to prison. Three weeks later, I had the board up in Jacksonville, I mean, up in Orlando, and we were doing a summit up there on the same circumstances. And we were able to come back and meet and talk about what we saw and what we did. And it helped us uh, develop some strategic recruitment planning for going on with the board. So that's, that's um, fantastic, Barry. We're, we're going so to give a little bit yeah. of space to the other colleagues. We're going to come back uh, to you in a minute. And okay. we're going to talk a little bit about the mentorship that um, Empowering Youth does as well. So we thank you so very, okay. very much. And I know it says Rosita, but we we call you Joe, right? Um, Joe uh, Kaufman is a board member of Women of Tomorrow, an incredible uh, mentorship program. And we're going to ask you to talk first in this first segment, Joe, if you can quickly um, introduce yourself, who you are in your day job, just very briefly, and then what a Women of Tomorrow does vis-a-vis -vis mentorship first. And then after that, we'll we'll come back to you later to talk about what it means to be on a board. How's that? Nami, do we have Joe? I think Joe dropped off. So are you are you there? Oh, there's for she some is. reason. Yeah. Can, there you, go, can you hear me? Hi. Yes. Hi. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. And thank you for having me here, Cam and Marin. I really truly appreciate it. My name is Joe Kaufman. Rosita is actually my legal name. I was born in the Philippines. And uh, in the Philippines, even though I'm pure Chinese, um, you have to have a Christian name. So that's my Christian name is Rosita. But you can all call me Joe. I work uh, for Morgan Stanley. I am I'm managing director. I have been with the firm for now 27, 28 years. And uh, it has been a career, a lifelong career that has been very, very good for all my clients and to my family. And this is also one of the topic that hopefully uh, over time uh, could be an interest to some of the younger women because we are always, always looking for the younger generation to have interest in wealth management. My uh, organization is Women of Tomorrow and uh, Women of Tomorrow actually is a mentoring and scholarship program that was uh, founded uh, by Jennifer Bellapi and Don Brown, uh, who were at the time in 1997, uh, were working at NBC in Miami. Uh, today, uh, Jennifer continues to be the, the president uh, of the organization. And I had the pleasure of uh, being included to be one of the national board member. And uh, it's interesting what Natalie had said as regards to being a board member, because I think uh, for those who have served or are currently serving uh, in the panel, um, it is in fact a, 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 a job that really requires for you to be very passionate uh, about the organization um, and towards what the mission of the organization is all about. And board membership for me has really helped me understand further. Uh, and I'm not going to like present myself here that I am actually an expert as being a board member because I've been approached so many times in my career uh, to be part of this and part of that. And for whatever reason, um, having been a young woman myself, you know, years ago, uh, it, this really resonated to me. Women of Tomorrow actually is, uh, uh, what we do is we are a group of very skilled, very accomplished professional women 
uh, mentoring small groups uh, of high school girls in public high schools. And we not only mentor, but we also offer scholarship uh, for the hope that, in the hope that the younger women uh, would actually pursue higher education. Uh, Every single year, we mentor about 4,000 girls, and we are in 160 public high school uh, year to date. And um, we serve Miami, Broward, and Palm Beach. And we also have exposure in Metro Detroit. Uh, I really know that there is like a time constraint in this, and I think a lot of us uh, would like probably to go to the Q&A. And I prefer the Q&A because then it becomes more impactful to those who ask the questions and hopefully to the audience. So I will give it back to Marianne. Okay, thank you so much, Joe. Um, it, it's really interesting as we go now on back to you, Claire. Um, I'm gonna prime this pump a little bit. Um, uh, we need really great board members. So I'm gonna, with, with you, Claire, it's very important. There are amazing organizations here in the audience today. There are folks who, who serve on boards and there are other people who probably doubt, you know, is it really that important? Should I say yes? Do ha I have the time? Um, the, the nonprofit world is a huge contributor to our society and to our economy, very frankly. And can you talk to us, can you give us two or three minutes about the importance of board service and any real wisdom that you can have, stuff that, that comes from your own experience, please. Uh, absolutely. You know, obviously, um, you know, our, our prior uh, panelists have, have highlighted that board members are critical in terms of shaping an organization's strategy and and today, you know, as I as I mentioned earlier, the fact that technologies like AI and quantum computing, they're not just science fiction anymore. They are happening at enormously fast rates, driving incredible change in every industry, including the not-for-profit world. Um, it means that having folks from my perspective that brings something to the table that you don't have within your within your leadership team. Traditionally, boards have looked to attorneys and accountants, um, but very few actually bring a technology or an innovation advisor onto their board. And I would say to you that in any industry, it's absolutely critical. Many companies still have their IT leaders reporting through to a COO or a CFO, some have elevated them to their C-suite and are acting as, as you know, leaders at the executive leadership team level. But many boards still haven't taken the opportunity to incorporate a technology um, advisor. And the reason this is so critical is that most folks are intimidated by technology. If you're not immersed in it and have spent many years in it, uh, the words AI and quantum computing just seem like science fiction, not relevant to us. We don't need to worry about it. We'll deal with that later. But the reality is these technologies are driving massive economic shifts on a global basis, huge economic shifts, and they're impacting jobs. So more of our not-for-profits are going to have more um, need to serve our communities as, as the world rapidly changes. Um, you know, I, I think recruiting folks that come from diverse backgrounds, obviously also key. The board is a source of resources um, and can connect you to additional funding opportunities. And that's always been um, the case for the team that represents IT women. They're out there in the community, connecting with corporate partners, connecting with um, local government and public sector resources, and, and really critical in terms of helping you uh, reach your goals by spreading the message or, or fundraising. The mentoring that some of the board members um, at IT Women bring to the leadership team is also, um, you know, mission critical. 
Um, we try to bring some of the scholars that we award scholarships to into the, the board, onto committees, um, and the, the mentorship that the board members provide to these young women is, is also, you know, mission critical. They also give back by helping other women that are in middle management roles and help them to advance to uh, leadership roles as well. Um, being that there's only 27% of the IT industry represented by women and only 3% are women of color, um, you know, we feel that it's it's mission critical that any woman that's in a position of leadership uh, turns around and, and really gives back to help pull, uh, you know, more women through. Men are incredible mentors and sponsors too, but sometimes that perspective coming from another woman, you know, that really understands the breadth of responsibilities, you know, each of us have on our plate uh, can just be that, that little bit of a difference. Well, Women of Tomorrow has made such an impact on this community and will continue to do so. And we thank you so much, Claire. I don't know if you've noticed, but we've got everybody thinking, really thinking here today. Um, Barry, I'm going to have a little conversation with you because you gave us all these wonderful nuggets about what it is to be a, a, a board leader and board service. So I'm going to flip a little bit and talk about the mentorship program that you're representing in empowering youth. I'm going to share with everybody here that Empowering Youth is one of the current cohort of grantee partners that the Women's Fund is working with right now. We looked when we came out of COVID as major impediments to women's economic empowerment and mobility being the lack of, of organized and a robust ecosystem for early child learning. And Dr. Andrea Wanza that you mentioned before, uh, their leader, Barry, uh, has been working with us very carefully. Can you talk a little bit about the the mentoring program that Empowering Youth does? And, and there's more than one, right? There's a lot of mentoring going on by the organization. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, um, I just want to talk about a couple of things. First of all, I want to tell you guys, mm -hmm. thank you for um, the Women's Fund uh, for funding um, what we have here at Empowerment Youth. Um, we've, been, um, we've been providing mentorship to individuals who are interested, interested in child care. We want to make sure that those who um, have the passion for this or have the, the tools for it. Um, it's very important that we, we, we get the best that society has. So we take a, a long look at how we investigate who we're bringing on board um, to make sure that they have the skill sets that are necessary to improve the circumstances in our mission. Um, and we also provide mentorship um, through uh, the development of the youth programs within the community as well. Um, those, those things are helping us build in the direction that we need because one of the things that we do understand is that a child is in school for a few hours a day and in the underserved communities, that plays an important role because um, sometimes we have a, a, a horrible situation where our <laughs> kids don't get the services they need because of where they're at, because persons don't know about the services. So one of the things that we have to do is we have to present more structure um, as what we do sometimes with job fairs, with mentoring programs, with colleges and universities, um, to try and create the internship programs that we need to support the next generations of leadership that we're going to have to take care of what we do. Um, there's a lot of learning that these young ladies <coughs> don't get when they don't have a father aboard. There's a lot of learning when they don't have both parents that are working towards the same goals within the home. And we have to provide those uh, particular services in some form or fashion. So with Dr. Wands and I, I try my absolute best to meet the needs of what she does by finding and being around other organizations <laughs> that have the services that she needs and what she's doing here um, with you guys. I think that uh, the support that we're getting from 
the colleges and the universities um, from St. Thomas University. Um, we now have one of the directors of uh, a professor, Marilyn Crom's um, Lawson, Marilyn Paris Lawson, uh, who helps us with some business development. And she also helps us with programs like in Miami Edison Senior High School, um, as far as uh, helping us to develop the programs that we can impact that uh, particular um, portion of the community. Now that's down in Liberty City. And also we have the same problem here up in Miami Gardens. So we have to do these same things. And it's a matter of just sitting down, looking at what's available and where the needs are. Um, yes. And that That's allows very, us very to we're, stay where we need, okay? We're so grateful and for that. We, and, and I are trying to accomplish. And we really want to highlight and give our deep respect to the really specific mentoring program that you're all working on, trying to encourage folks who are interested in the early child learning segment to feel comfortable and be able to get the education that they need to be able to be professionals in that segment, because that pipeline is so necessary. These early child learning centers cannot be open if we don't have quality employees and staff. So the mentorship that you all are providing is terrific. And we want to give a special applause to Dr. Wanza and, and your entire team for that work that you're doing. So we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Really important collaborative work. Thank you for being partners. And I know, Joe, that you said that you wanted to go to Q&A, so I'm just going to be really quick with you, and I'm going to ask you very specifically, you told us in our pre-interviews uh, that you as a board member are working really hard, especially on connecting and fundraising for the programs that you're doing. Can you tell us a little bit about um, that role that you've taken on as a board member in just a minute or two, and then we'll uh, we'll bring um, Natalie back and join everybody for the Q&A. In Palm Beach, where I am, I actually also chair uh, one of our events uh, called Rose Palm Beach. Rose Palm Beach actually uh, is every single year we have it. And uh, we manage to uh, network a lot of women who are very successful and some are actually retired to come to our event. And that's the way how we it raised funds for our girls. Um, because also of these women that have major connections in Palm Beach, um, we continue to actually evolve uh, in raising funds because we make sure that we, ha we have created awareness in the past uh, few years that this organization actually exists. Uh, we're, we're, we're only like nine years old in Palm Beach. In Miami, we've been there forever. Uh, so that is where I actually help raise money is in the Palm Beach uh, uh, chapter. So uh, we actually uh, also from time to time, we'll do like small, you know, intimate uh, dinners with some of our uh, women that are interested in, you know, we, that we know are very philanthropic and uh, make sure that they are aware of what we do uh, because what we really do at Women of Tomorrow is, is life-changing and a life-saving program. You know, because we, we have a slew uh, list of, ex extensive list of who are the girls out there that are at risk. Um, most of them come from, very low income families, um, you know, anybody who probably are experiencing physical abuse in the home, uh, drug abuse, uh, ailing parents, whatever it is that they have going on in their lives that could use the mentoring from Women of Tomorrow. This is what we bring to the table to some of our major uh, patrons and donors. And uh, through just always making awareness, uh, making sure that we, we, we speak about these girls who are in need uh, of, of mentoring and, and, and scholarships, uh, we, because we do give grants to those who qualify uh, for the scholarship, our scholarship program. And we, you know, I find that um, the vast majority of the girls that are in, that have enrolled uh, in, in our mentoring program uh, actually has a, a pretty good 
uh, rate of success, like 96% of the high school graduation is the rate that we achieve from among those that are at risk population. And uh, the, the schools choose the girls that they feel is at risk that could actually use some mentoring. And uh, whenever we have this fundraising in, in Palm Beach, Broward and in Miami, we make sure that we actually have some of the mentees uh, attend uh, so that we can go ahead and um, present to them that here, here she is graduated. And now she's actually uh, a nurse. She's actually uh, a, a CPA. And you know what is great about this is that the donors and the patrons actually are able to go ahead and witness that what used to be the mentees are now also the ones giving back and mentoring some of the mentees that we currently have. And that's how we actually go ahead and raise, you know, uh, funding for a program. So it's this to is, just create it's, awareness, it's, create awareness, never stop, just create awareness all the time. Amazing. This it, It's perfect because this shows a snapshot of an ecosystem that works. The public school system relying on nonprofits to do something to bolster needs that are not being addressed within yeah, the it, public system, which, which is fantastic. And the transformation of the employer. We're really looking to break the cycle, you know, of violence at home, and um, and and you know, it it one of this in, in the Q and A, anybody can ask me because I I picture myself as one of those girls when I was young. It's incredible. I think uh, many of us here today have have an example of the impact of mentorship and how it can be completely transformational, whether it was from an individual. Um, person who helped or it's through a, a formal program. It's absolutely amazing. So we're going to bring the Q&A together. We're going to ask you, Natalie, to join us in our board chair. Arathi Ramapa has a really great question that you have all led here. Um, she's saying, you know, she's been talking here about um, a lot of discussion about having some board members that are directly from the community that you serve. Um, who'd like to volunteer to take this question? And can you share your thoughts on this? Who'd like to take this one? Maria, I'm so sorry. I didn't hear the question. Uh, it's it's the one that Arathi put in the chat, the discussion about having <clears throat> members of the community that oh, you serve yep. join your board, which is a, a terrific question and a ter terrific focus issue. Who'd like to take that one? I'd love to jump on that because we've we've actually supported a number of nonprofits, not just in uh, South Florida, but as clients. And I find it fascinating when there's no one on their board that's from the communities that they serve. And we've talked about a lot of different ways in which to do that. Like sometimes it might be having like a community action committee where there are our local uh, members of the local community. Um, but <clears throat> I think when you think about our role as board members and 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 on these uh, picking organizations we fall in love with, we're trying to be allies to the mission, right? We're trying to make sure that uh, we are supporting, um, and sometimes we're on boards for things that we don't necessarily need ourselves, but we want to be allies for it. And I always say that like, you have to ask people what they need. Uh, you can't go and decide for them. And I think if you're not including the voices from your community, then it becomes performative because then you're deciding for people uh, what works for them. Um, and I just think that, and, and I think there's a little bit of that that happens. Uh, that was probably like the saviorism piece of it was is kind of how nonprofits were 15, 20 years ago. But I think there's a lot of evolution um, in how nonprofits are checking themselves in this regard. So to me, I think it's really, really important and um, I love this question. And of course, uh, it was posed by a brilliant, brilliant woman. So thank you for the question. <laughs> indeed, <laughs> indeed, indeed. Um, Rosita Claire, or yeah, if, Barry, if you'd like to join, please do volunteer. You're, anybody else want to take that or I'm or on to the next question? Um, absolutely. You know, we, we definitely have um, students, um, represent our board um because I again you know mm. understanding what their needs are versus just assuming what their needs are 
you know, is, is really important. So absolutely, you know, find a way. Terrific. Terrific. Okay. So th there's a question here that came on the side um, saying women are known to often underestimate ourselves when we're like applying for a job, right? It's a, it's a classic. The stats say that many women will not apply for a job because of the 14 posted requirements they feel like they only have 11. Whereas a man tends to say, oh, I do those three things very well. I can learn the other 11 or I'm gonna apply, right? That's that that's a classic. Um, can you talk about how, how mentorship um, can help fix that problem? Natalie, you're smiling. <laughs> you know why I'm smiling is because this, <laughs> I just literally had to tell someone yesterday Sometimes we just have to believe it, right? Like when you see like how you might be performing in way you, you keep, and I don't really love the term imposter syndrome because I don't know that that's exactly what this is. It's more like we work really, 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 really hard and we're like, is it enough? Is it not enough? And then it, sometimes when you look around and you see sometimes who you're working with, you're like, just believe it. Like, just believe that. I mean, you've been doing it all these years. Like, just believe it. I'm just, we just had this conversation with me and a girlfriend did yesterday. So, uh, that's why I'm laughing. <laughs> I, I I probably could also you know chime in on this, but um, I I have interviewed so many women in in, in my career uh, to be part of uh, to be part in the in this industry. And what I believe, I think all of us women have to think is that some of us are really actually born with certain skill sets. Whatever those skill sets are, it's ingrained in our DNA. But I have to tell you that um, one of the values that I have actually taken with me into this organization are personal experiences. Having grown up in a, in, in a household where I never really had mentoring, um, you know, I came from a very impoverished situation. Uh, I've learned that I've learned that skill sets can also be acquired. And when you're young and you happen to idolize, for example, Natalie or Marion or whoever it is, your teacher, um, uh, you know, a priest you adore, you know, uh, your sister, whoever it is that you really actually could identify with, with yourself. It's really so important that it's not, it's not, a, um, it's, it's, it, it's not going to be against you to imitate what it is that they do and not only imitate it, but also actually be better than them. And that's exactly how I, I you know, built my career was looking at everybody that had been successful in, 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 in my business. And I watched them, I studied what it is that they did and tried to be really as good, if not better than them. And this is actually how you become successful in life. And if you have that, even, you know, when you're in high school, for example, and you know how it is in high schools, there are like, you know, group A, group B, group C, even if you are in group C and you look at group A like, wow, those girls are so awesome. And how, how could I be in that group? And, you know, as Natalie is saying, just believe in yourself because you certainly were born with some skill sets that are already in you. And as you imitate somebody's skill set, and can be better than that person, that's when you actually blossom. And mm -hmm. so in interviews, it, during interviews, um, you know, it can go both ways. I can have uh, a, a, like an interview, an applicant who can talk themselves into the best, the best, the best of presentation of themselves. And then when they sit behind that desk, they're really actually, not that they're not who, they said they were, but they just can't really be sitting behind that desk. And then you can have somebody, uh, including myself, who uh, was ignored so many times by different, you know, 
Nobody's Fortune thinking about you now, Joe. Fortune 500 companies. And I, I, um, you know, I just kind of really used that skill set where I was pushy. I never gave up. I was resourceful. I had initiatives and I empowered my own self. I empowered my own self during the interview. And for some reason, it only takes, it only takes one person to believe in you. And if that person, if you are given that opportunity, make sure you seize that opportunity and take it to the next level. So we're going to say that is a truth. Everybody can take home. We'll also, because time is up, remind people that mentorship also has very practical door opening capacities. So leadership has something to do with being seen in leadership, envisioning being able to have somebody think because Joe's your mentor or Natalie's your mentor or Claire or Barry is your mentor. I can see myself because I see them leading, but it's also that those leaders and those mentors give you access to leadership, access to resources, access to open doors, to 15 minutes to talk to the person that you need to know to network, to, to move forward. So mentorship is powerful. Board service is absolutely critical. It's a huge machine that helps to empower our community. And so we thank each of you, whether you are on screen, here in the audience, um, influencing your networks. We do um, thank you for your leadership and encourage people to continue to serving and iterating in amazing boards. We are going to see you next year. 2024 we're going to kick off the year early january 4th is our, our our first impact collaborative and i also got a little something somebody called today and i think there's going to be a little something special to benefit us on january 6th with a little fundraiser for any of those of you who who follow dr mindy pell so your women's fund is going to get uh refreshed in december we hope you are too and we'll see you at the very beginning of January. Thank you for your leadership in your own lives and in our community. Happy New Year. Thank you, Marianne. Thank you, Pam, for inviting us. Thank you, everyone. And have a great weekend. Happy holidays. Thank you, Joe.